Hello, crafty people. Uh, my name is Noelle, and I am the Zero Waste Maker, coming to you from Denver, Colorado. I am very excited to be here because I am about 38 weeks in change uh, pregnant currently and have been in some prodromal labor, so I didn't think I was going to be able to make my January podcast. Um, but the baby is holding out, so I'm going to share with you all of the things that I've been making over the last about six weeks. Some of these have been in the uh, vlog updates over December because I participated in Vlogmas. Um, but in case you don't want to watch, <laughs> you know, 25 two minute clips, uh, I'm going to show you some of the things that we made during Vlogmas uh, separately. So the first thing, let's just jump right in. Um, the first thing that I spent the majority of my December making is with an advent calendar from By Miranda Makes or by Miranda May uh, on Etsy, and I will link to her shop down below. And these were all of the colors that she included in her advent calendar, knit up into the, uh, this is the outline shawl, or outline wrap by Hedgehog Fibers. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Uh, it lends itself really well to crazy leftover advent style knitting. And originally, I was thinking I would make a wrap for myself in this crazy, crazy palette. Uh, and then I was thinking maybe this could be a baby blanket or a baby wrap, because that would be really sweet. But my toddler had different ideas. I've been doing a lot of baby knitting, um, so my three-year-old is quite jealous. And he decided that this is a perfect toddler shawl. So I have a lot of photos of him wearing this already and he really likes having his own shawl. Um, so my advent knitting turned into a toddler shawl at the end. Uh, during, during December when I was doing this knitting, um, I also took some of the colorways and made some baby socks. So another FO. These are the baby socks by Sock Street. And I really liked them because they have the twisted rib at the top. And then they also do a twisted rib um, on the opposite side of the heel. Just to keep them on the baby's feet. So these looked like a really good... And they have a lot of elastic right there. With the twisted, twisted rib mid-sock. Um, they looked like a really good pattern for staying on feet. I know that's always the problem with baby socks is they get kicked off and then lost. But this is also by Miranda May, um, her Avent yarn. And I just put two colors together to make a little baby sock. Um, for Christmas, what I received as a gift was the Greener Shades um, yarn dyeing kit. So it's a yarn dyeing, um, like yarn dyeing setup that doesn't include heavy metals and is supposed to be a little bit better for the environment and things. So I got that and I got a uh, specifically sourced type of sock yarn that is made in Italy and is supposed to be a little bit better for the environment than the usual 80-20. This is still 80-20 sock yarn, um, but I just tried to source it a little bit more sustainably. And this is the first color I have ever dyed and I'm calling it my Starry Nights colorway. And I spent probably the week after Christmas. I dyed this up and then I spent the next couple weeks making my favorite little thing that I've made so far for the baby, I think. Um, these are the Hosen Mats pants. It's a, another free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and they're just super soft, stretchy baby pants. And if you roll them up like this, I'm hoping they're gonna fit very early on a couple weeks old all the way and be grow with me pants and fit all the way up to when he's maybe six to nine months old. But they're, they have a little V in the back that grows so that they can accommodate a cloth diaper. Um, and we will be cloth diapering as per our zero waste lifestyle. So this is my Starry Night colorway, my first handmade hand dyed yarn and the hose and mats pants and we didn't have any pooling that was my 
I was very excited and was not expecting that. I was not expecting such a good result. Yeah, they came out great. The yarn's very even. And I really love the color. It definitely reminds me of the Starry Night painting. Lots of speckles, lots of yellow, green, and primary blue. Yeah, that is probably one of my most exciting finished objects for before the baby comes, and I was so thrilled to get it off the needles before he showed up. Um, and yes, you will be seeing more hand-dyed yarn from me. Um, I'm considering, if I can get the hang of it and make consistent colorways, considering putting some colorways into an Etsy shop just for fun, um, just to have a little side hustle or side gig for while I'm out on maternity leave so I can feel like I'm doing something constructive. Um, but yes, these are my finished objects for December and January. Um, and then I have in progress, works in progress, I still have my Tecumseh on the needles, but when I realized I wasn't going to finish it in time for Christmas, um, I lost steam. So I haven't been working on my Tecumseh, so I can't really call it a whip. It's not really in progress currently. Um, and I'm thinking I'll probably pick it up at the end of next summer when it's time for fall and have it ready for fall. Um, currently, the only thing I have on the needles are my, they're just a vanilla sock, but they're a four by one rib vanilla sock. So that they fit really well in, this is the Amnest colorway by Malabrigo. Um, it's their sock yarn and it was just on sale at Fancy Tiger. So I've been making these and I have a hoe and I recently turned a heel and have my, whoop, have my little progress keeper, my handmade progress keeper of a strawberry. Um, but I recently turned to heel, and the funniest thing is that since I have been experiencing this prodromal labor and been really tense, uh, I cannot keep my stitches on the needles. <laughs> they keep falling off because my knitting has become so incredibly tight. Um, I'm a little bit worried that the socks are going to be different sizes just because I've been so tense and stressed and uptight with, <laughs> with all of the laboring. <laughs> Um, but yeah, every time I put this back in the bag, um, my, my needles fall out, uh, my stitches have become really, really tight and they drop down, they drop down for me. So I have to pick up stitches every time. <laughs> and this is in a little handmade sock sack, um, with a little wire wrapped crystal. And of course my grocery girls and fancy tiger enamel pens on it. And I just love this sock sack. And I love having handmade things inside of other handmade things with handmade charms and all that stuff. Nothing makes me happier than having everything be handmade. Oh, that's kind of my approach to life and zero waste is the more handmade, the better. Um, the other thing that I finished that I know was a brand new craft and I've never done before. Um, and it was part of my zero waste journey because I was looking for a bedspread for my toddler who just moved up from the toddler bed or the convertible crib toddler bed into a twin size bed. Um, we were looking for like an option for ethically sourced, sustainable, something that would be compostable. So like natural materials, but also ethically made maybe in the US or fair trade. Um, and we just couldn't find bedding for a toddler that was both compostable and ethically made. So the dilemma was, do I learn to quilt so that I can sustainably and ethically make him a bedspread for this new bed? And the answer is, of course you just quilt it yourself. You just learn to quilt, of course. Um, it did seem a little bit nuts at the time and still kind of does, but I have fallen in love with quilting. I just love crafting. I think that that's, I just love all crafts. <laughs> so this is my first ever quilt. Um, almost all of the fabric is from Fancy Tiger. So this guy's from Fancy Tiger and all of this is all from Fancy Tiger. 
Um, the only thing that's not is I did purchase the theme, which is Call of the Mountains, um, which is a hand-painted, um, like, watercolor uh, print from Spoonflower, and it comes from a specific designer who's, like, selling their design on Spoonflower and has different versions of it, like, variations of color um, and different sizes, and you can purchase it printed on different fabrics. So I decided that would be our room theme for the boys, since I'm having two boys and they're going to be sharing a nursery. Um, that would be our room theme. And then everything else came from Fancy Tiger. So I did a very, very simple four by four squares, just so that I wouldn't get confused, that it would be easy. A simple first quilt. I just did four by four squares. This is not a standard size. I made it the size of his bed. <laughs> um, his bed is very low to the ground and it has like edging that goes all the way up to the side. So I didn't want it to hang over as per the standard size. So I think it's the correct length, but the width is different because I made it narrower to, to fit on top of the bed. Um, and I did not hand quilt any of this. This is all just done on my sewing machine. And so what I did for quilting is just the edging here and the edging here. Um, my border came out kind of strange. I didn't know what I was doing really. I looked up some tutorials. I, I've never quilted before. I don't have anyone to show me. I just looked it up on YouTube and did the best I could. Um, so my border is a little bit weird because I made it too long. And so when I folded it over, there's a lot more border on the back than the front. Um, but I think it worked out okay. This turned into some top quilting. <laughs> and the border looks nice on the back. And I got this fantastic, at Fancy Tiger, I got this fantastic double gauze, which is the softest quilt backing I've ever felt. My grandmother makes quilts for us on a regular basis, and we have maybe half a dozen quilts from my grandmother. And she uses cotton usually, and I swear double gauze is the softest, nicest thing I've ever, ever felt. And I think I will probably use that again. But this is all 100% cotton, and all of the thread is 100% cotton. So the entire thing, including the filling and the materials, everything is compostable. So when we're finished with this, this can be broken down, burned, you know, torn into shreds and composted. Um, like out in your yard. So I was very, very excited about that. Not that it will be, I'm sure it will be a beloved family heirloom. <laughs> uh, if anything, it'll just turn into a lap quilt when he's too big for it, but I was very excited to have finished my first quilt. And my toddler was, he's just enthusiastic. He's an enthusiastic guy, he's the kind of uh, he is, he is make worthy. He's knit worthy. He's quilt worthy. Uh, he is very excited to receive handmade items and was ecstatic that he now has his own big boy quilt on his own bed and that he has his own big boy bed. <laughs> he was ecstatic. So that was really, really nice um, seeing his reaction. The other thing, because I loved making that so much, but it was a bit expensive. So I think I spent $130 total on all the materials to make this quilt, which is very high in my opinion for a bedspread. And of course this is a craft and a hobby and it's sustainable. And if you were buying it organic and you know sustainably made and locally made and that sort of thing, you would pay a really high price you know, for actual, the actual cost of labor and the actual cost of materials. So I understand why the price is so high, um, but still I, I know that for most people it's a little bit hard to swallow and it's a little bit hard to swallow for me too, being so frugal. Um, so one of the things that I have done, uh, because I did buy a little bit extra here and there to make sure that I didn't you know, come up short in the end. Um, so I have a lot of extra fabric. So one of the things I have done is decided to make a scrappy quilt um, for the baby, and it's gonna be a crib quilt. And you'll obviously see, I did not have enough of the mountains to put very many. I think I have three in here. And some of the other fabrics that I used in the first quilt, I had 
leftovers, but I only had enough for a few. Um, so a lot of this, like this is from a shirt that I made. These are leftovers. This was a dress that I had made, the fin dress actually, um, that I loved, but I washed and eventually it, it became smaller and smaller and started to shred on the inside. Um, so this is just scraps from a dress that I made. Um, this is a hus my husband's work shirt. This is just one of his 100% cotton shirts. Uh, and it just happened to match. Like these were curtains from my sister's classroom that she had given me a scrap. So I'm making a scrappy quilt for the baby. And then you can see from my border, I had a nice long piece for the edges, but across the top I did not. So I just put together squares from the long skinny pieces to go across the top and bottom and just worked out the math for how big those could be. Um, but this is actually a standard, standard crib size. Just happened to be able to get the, the math to work out right. And I only have the quilt top so far, so there is no backing yet. Um, but I have double gauze left over and I've been sewing strips together, so it's gonna have panels of the double gauze on the back. Um, and I'm thinking that for the inside, um, for the batting, I don't have enough batting left over to do a second quilt, but I do have 100% cotton sheets, and I'm thinking of just doubling or tripling those up and putting 100% cotton sheets on the inside. And then my goal for this quilt, because it is not in a hurry like the other quilt was, I needed that quilt immediately <laughs> um, so I could move the toddler over to his new bed, but for this quilt, I'm thinking I want to hand stitch some of the top to get some of those really nice, um, like some of those really nice textures and patterns and things. And I think that a lot of people quilt for the hand quilting. I know my grandmother does. She hand quilts all of her quilts um, completely. And I'm sure that mine won't be as nice as all that. But I would really like to try to create some fun textures and patterns and things through hand quilting. And I also thought that that might be a nice little task for my leave. I have officially started my maternity leave um, because with like the random contractions and prodromal labor, I have not been able to drive really. It's not really safe to be having contractions in the car. Um, I haven't been able to drive around and working has been really sporadic. It's been really difficult to work from home. Um, so I decided to start my leave early. Um, and some days when I'm having a terrible day, this seemed like a great idea because I am you know, need to focus on what my body is doing and be here. And some days like today, uh, I feel okay. And I'm like, why am I on leave right now? I'm not having any contractions at the moment. Um, but really the answer is just so that I will rest. And so I think that hand stitching, laying around and hand stitching will be a nice little relaxing thing to do to pass the time um, without putting too much effort or, or strain onto my day. So those are the things that I have going and I'm very excited. I think these go together so well. Um, I know they don't match exactly, but I think that this quilt and this, um, this crib quilt are gonna make a really, really nice nursery theme. And I'm hoping that the Call of the Mountains theme is obvious. Um, I also wanted to do a segment on zero waste because I do love crafting as a way to be more sustainable, consume more slowly, and you know, reuse and upcycle materials. I love crafting, but we also do a lot of other zero waste things in our lives. Um, and I know that a lot of people are pretty curious about uh, living a zero waste life and what that actually looks like. Uh, we are not uh, white walls and, <laughs> and stainless steel, although I do have a little bit of stainless steel to show you. Um, but our house isn't the minimalist picture of a lifestyle that you would see on Instagram. This is what zero waste actually looks like, upcycling scraps and finding weird things at the thrift store and just making use of the things that you have without replacing them needlessly just because the fashions or trends have changed. So, 
Um, the first thing I'd like to show you guys is some stuff I got at the thrift store this week. And if you are considering thrifting, right now after the holidays is the best time of year to go thrifting. They had so much good stuff. I got my toddler some snow boots for next year that looked brand new. Um, I found a coat for him for next year. I usually buy like the next winter's things um, in the spring or summer before because usually by late summer and early fall, the prices have gone up, the jackets aren't as nice. Um, people discarding things around Christmas time and around the new year is the best time of year to go and find things that are nice, very gently used and at great prices because no one's trying to buy a winter coat for summer. Um, but just buy it one size up and that's how we've been handling that. Um, anyway, they had a ton of zero waste style stuff at the thrift store. I found metal Tiffins. I don't need any, we have a couple. Um, and they only get moderate use because you can't heat things up in metal Tiffins. Um, so we have plenty, but they had metal Tiffins. They had uh, French presses, which I always have a hard time finding. We do have one currently. Um, but I have always had a hard time finding a new French press whenever I've needed one, and they had several this week. They had loose leaf teapots, which I don't even think I've seen at the thrift store before. It must be gifts that people didn't want that they're discarding or something. You know, you receive a loose leaf teapot and decide to donate it because you're not going to drink loose leaf tea. Um, but for those of us who are trying to live a more sustainable life, those are fantastic tools. And yeah, definitely check out your local thrift shop for people discarding that sort of thing at this time of year. Somebody, I think, had a holiday party and decided to purchase a, and I have way more than this, I think I maybe got 15 or 20 of them for $4. Um, someone decided to have a party of some kind or something, order this huge thing of stainless steel reusable straws and then after the holidays were over, they discarded them and they were kind of dirty when I when I purchased them. Um, you like look through them and you can see like that they were dirty, but they came with these brushes. So all that was needed was a little bit of elbow grease. You just have to take the time to clean them. And I know that that's annoying if you weren't planning to make this a lifestyle, but I thought it was fantastic that someone, <laughs> someone else was getting rid of them. Um, and I know a lot of people say, you know, straws are unnecessary. I have a toddler and every time we go out for a meal, he asks the waiter for a straw. So every time we go out for a meal, before he can ask the waiter for a straw, I pull it out of my bag and say, oh look, here's your straw. Make sure to tell the waiter that you have a straw already. And that saves us from a lot of straws that are totally unnecessary. Um, <laughs> especially the ones that I really wanted, woo were these big giant thick ones. They're like a boba tea or milkshake sort of straw. And they're great for smoothies. And also for milkshakes, we do go out to a local ice cream shop and get milkshakes on a regular basis. And I haven't been able to argue with my husband about skipping the straw in his milkshake because I don't have an alternative for him. And here it is, the solution to milkshake straws. But also having this big of a straw seems to really entice my toddler to drink his water or milk or whatever he's having. Um, yeah, that was my first thrift store find. And then the second thing is that usually we do handmade ceramics. Um, I really have loved them, but recently we've been breaking them left and right and handmade ceramics are not recyclable. You cannot recycle broken glass and especially not broken ceramics. They are also not compostable because of how they are glazed. Um, so we've been throwing handmade ceramics in the trash after they're broken on a regular basis and I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so we were at the thrift store and they had these, which I already have two of these for my toddler. Um, they are stainless steel like camping style plates and they had a set of, I think they had six, but I only bought four because we're going to be a family of four. So I figured last plates we'll ever need to buy. Um, but I have two for my toddler already and he really loves them and you can't heat your food up in them But we have so many glass Tupperwares and glass jars and things that we heat our food in that I just don't see why we wouldn't heat our food in the Storage container and then put it on the plate 
Um, and so far, they have been working out great. I really, really love them. They help me to make meals. Here's your salad, here's your vegetable, here's your main dish. Um, my husband laughed at me and called them prison plates <laughs> and says that I am feeding us on prison plates. But the idea that these will never break and never need to go to landfill and that even if something were to happen to them and they got run over by a truck, that they could be recycled. Um, I just love that idea so much more. So this was my other really nice uh, zero waste find at the thrift store after Christmas. And I paid $3.49 per plate, which is a little high, um, but I was not willing to risk leaving them there and trying to find them on Saturday. On Saturday, our thrift store does half off, and that's usually when I go to the thrift stores on Saturday. Um, but these were just such fantastic finds for our zero waste lifestyle that I really wanted to share them and talk about them a little bit. Um, another thing, this one is baby specific. This was our household zero waste. But for our baby specific zero waste segment, uh, I wanted to talk about cloth diapering because this is something that we do and that we did with our son from the time he was born until the time he was two and potty trained. Um, we cloth diaper from the first moment <laughs> that they are born. We don't wait for the meconium to pass. I know that everyone says like the first few poops that babies have when they're first born stay in your diapers, but we have not found that they do that at all. In fact, this is a newborn size diaper that I sewed myself. Um, I did get really deep into diaper making the last time that I was pregnant. That was one of my main crafts that I did. And so I made these diapers. Um, this is one of the first diapers I put on my newborn son. And as you can see, it is still completely white. We don't bleach anything. I don't purchase bleach of any kind. I only use natural Nelly's laundry detergent and white vinegar and sun bleaching. I just stick them in the sun. Um, but this was a meconium diaper and also was used for my son's first three months of his whole life. And it is still stark white. So I believe very firmly in cloth diapering that it is totally sanitary and fantastic for the environment. And these are the three, I wanted to talk about the three different types of cloth diapers that we use because I know that this type of cloth diaper is a little bit more sustainable, but a little bit more difficult than this type. These are the more modern ones. So this was a purchased cloth diaper. Um, it's a little Joey's Toki Doki diaper and it's an all-in-one, which means, and these are all newborn size. These are not our big diapers, um, but it means that it's all one piece. I don't know if you can see that, nothing comes out. Whoop. Nothing comes out, this is attached. So they would use this diaper just like a regular disposable diaper and then you would take it off and chuck it in your washing machine. Um, you don't have to do anything to clean them that's special until they start eating solid foods. Um, but while they are exclusively nursing, they can pee, poop, whatever in one of these guys and you can just chuck it immediately into your washing machine and everything comes out because it's all liquid. <laughs> um, but this is the like store-bought kind of diaper that's all in one and takes no additional work whatsoever. It's the exact same amount of work as using a disposable diaper. They're a little bit more expensive but people are basically paying a little extra for the convenience. And because it's a newborn diaper, they have the little snap in the front for the umbilical cord. Oh, I can't even imagine. It's going to be so small. Um, anyway, these are, this is the one I made and this is the pocket diaper, uh, meaning that it works the same way as these guys and making them is a little bit cheaper. Um, I think I got the price down to about six or seven dollars per diaper and these guys are probably 16 to 18 dollars per diaper. So I got the price pretty far down by just making them myself. Um, but it is a pocket diaper, which means it has a little pocket in the back where you put the absorbent things. So I also made the little absorbency pad. I think this has terry cloth and flannel and cotton just sewn together in a big square. And that's the part that absorbs all the pee. 
um, but the baby uses this the same way they would use a disposable diaper and then you pull this out whenever it's time to wash like you just remove it and then you have to whenever you're ready to use it again you have to stuff it back in so they are just a tiny bit more work because you have to remove and stuff in the um, the absorbency piece of it but they do dry a lot faster so if you're hang drying things this guy needs to be inside out in the sun and this guy can be pulled apart and the two pieces dry a lot quicker even if you're drying indoors um, the all-in-ones fare a little bit better in the dryer but if you're trying to conserve energy and things like that and you're hang drying or line drying um, these guys work a lot better and then the ultimate zero waste diaper that is totally compostable is the wool covers so I also sewed this one and this is a, an upcycled wool so this is a wool sweater I got from the thrift store like a natural wool sweater and I bought an extra extra large men's sweater so I can make a bunch of these um, and I cut them up and used a pattern online and this is where the diaper goes and the little legs little legs come out boop um, I know it looks like a funny shape but it really fits very well <laughs> um, but this is wool that's been lanolized um, a lot of the um, there's like lanolizing nipple butter that people get and I never used any of that for nursing um, but I did use it to lanolize my wool diaper covers, which just means it makes it more waterproof. Wool's already naturally um, water resistant and wicking and it's warm whenever, like whenever it's um, cold outside, but it also has like a natural airiness to it, the way that like hand knits do. Um, yeah, it just it's breathable in a way that's unusual and that you wouldn't expect. Um, that cotton is or not cotton that um, plastic or polyester like these waterproof like plastic materials are not actually breathable at all so you would think that the wool cover was going to be um, a little bit warmer but it's actually not at all <laughs> it's great for summertime um, these are pre-folds and whoop so you just fold them up you can stick them on the baby this way or you can make them into the little diaper shape where you pull around the sides around their legs like this and these are 100% cotton these are from Green Mountain diapers so they're completely compostable at the end of life whenever we're done using them we'll probably use them as some sort of a cleaning rag and eventually just compost them in our yard and you use the little modern day snappies instead of safety pins cloth diapers have come a long way there's no more safety pinning you use the little snappies that grab onto the fabric and hold the diaper together and then you would stick this whole thing you would put the cover on top of the diaper boop and then here's your here's your baby <laughs> uh whoop. that snappy sticking out but this is the most environmentally friendly way to cloth diaper probably um, it's upcycled materials only, sustainable, handmade, compostable materials only. Um, the only reason I don't do this exclusively is because daycare and babysitters and other people in our lives really appreciate this situation. So we do a combination, um, but we do it from the first moment until the last, and we didn't use any disposables. We traveled internationally and we traveled to see family several times on airplanes and most places have washing machines <laughs> um we also like overnight we just double up our absorbency and we never used overnight diapers or anything like that so if you are looking to have a zero waste baby i highly recommend cloth diapering it is the largest source of trash that comes from having a baby and this really solves the solves the problem <laughs> Anyway, I think I've gone on long enough about all of our zero waste stuff. Um, that is what I have for you this month. And I think that next month in February, whenever I am ready to talk about what we've been crafting since then, um, we will definitely have a new baby. So expect to see him in next month's uh, podcast. 
But thanks, thanks for being with me. Um, I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season and you're starting out the new year on the right foot and getting lots of crafting goals accomplished. Um, uh, again, I'm the Zero Waste Maker on Instagram and Ravelry. And I have a blog called zerowastemaker.wordpress.com. So check that out. And I will see you guys soon. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>